So I'm back looking at some new Chinese laptops. This is the new generation that is coming out. And no, it's not actually this model right here that I have in front of me. This is the Techlast F7. The F7 turned out to be the best Apollo Lake laptop. So we now have the successor of the Apollo Lake, which is the Gemini Lake. They're slightly faster, 200 megahertz more. That's the N4100. It's also got two megabytes more of cache supports up to 4K 60 hertz, although I think this has only got HDMI 1.4 spec on it, so it needs to have HDMI 2. And what I'm pointing at there on the side of the video is this, of course. This box has the Jumper Easy Book 4X in it, and this is the Gemini Lake successor to that older generation of laptops. So really just an upgraded version of the EasyBook 3L Pro. Now I get it's a little bit confusing, but the 3L Pro is the 14 inch model. The EasyBook 3 Pro is the 13.3 inch model. Now straight away there is a bit of a con with this, and it's gonna be a deal breaker for some people. It has a TN panel, and that means it's not gonna have the IPS colors, it's not gonna have the IPS viewing angles most importantly, so vertical viewing angles on TN panels tend to be quite poor, and they were, on the EasyBook 3 L Pro. So the X4 now has double data rate for RAM, which is great. It's gonna be a lot faster, but it's only four gigabytes, not the six we got on the previous models. And that is because of double data rate for prices. They are to blame there for that. So it is a little dinged around the box and it looks exactly like the EasyBook 3 L Pros and the Jumper EasyBook 3 Pros box. So the same, it's a very thin, uh, light cardboard box that doesn't really withstand damage too much, which isn't great for exporting this all the way, of course, from China. So in that long box there at the top, you have the power supply, two-prong Chinese US style. They don't have localized versions. You cannot get an Australian, New Zealand, or European plugs for this. You have to use an adapter. It's rated to 12 volts, two amps. There is at least some decent padding around, as you can see with this foam they put around the laptop itself there. And then we do have this user manual. This is in Chinese and English. It weighs only 1.35 kilos. So that's the same as the EasyBook 3L Pro and the Techlast F7 more or less. And the thickness is close to 14 millimeters. So on the left you will find a status LED, micro HDMI out. And you can also see here, we do have a USB 3 port. And I can see already that is the exact same ODM, so original design manufacturer, as the EasyBook 3L Pro and the Techlast F7. Now the lid is quite firm. It does have a protective plastic on the top of it. Now I'm pressing down quite hard. There is a little bit of flex there. And you'll see there is also the jumper logo you can see. Now it's a little hard to see. It depends on the angle. Whereas on the Techlast F7, there's no logos on the top. It's just the straight alloy. On the right side, we have DCN, headphone jack with microphone support, another USB 3 port, and then our micro SD card slot. Now the bottom of it has some rubber feet. It's alloy again, all screwed in place. Very solid, the build of these laptops. They are good, this ODM. Now a little surprise here, we have a full-sized, well you could say 2280 SSD bay here. Before it was just the little flap here that I'll show you on the Techlast F seven so that's a 2242 size slot and then obviously because they knew a lot of us were modding or opening them up and installing the 2280s on the easybook 3 pro but clearly they don't want us inside this they don't want us to open it up because there's a little sticker on here it's a little hard to read but it says don't tear up but you know me i'm gonna go ahead and tear this right up so the pre-installed ssd is a 2242 in size so we have a nice large copper heatsink. This hasn't changed from the earlier models. They didn't run into any thermal throttling, so this is good. Why change something if it's working perfectly fine? So we have, this is for the backlit keyboard, keyboard ribbon there. We have the power cable. This is for the TN panel, so the LCD cable goes up there, speaker cable there. This is the tiny little wireless AC chipset, so it's Intel 3165. Oh, and for modders out there, if you do want to lower thermals, simply place right here above the chipset a one millimeter thick thermal pad as large as you can that will transfer heat then to the rear alloy case acting as a super large heatsink. The battery is almost 37 watt hours, so this is good. It should be good for about six to seven hours, but of course I'll find out in my full review. 
And then the speakers are located in the top here. There are four gaps for the speakers. So it has four tiny little speakers. They'll be exactly the same hardware as the Techlast F7. So that actually resonates and comes out through to between the gap and the, and the screen and the bottom base. So this I really do like. They've got this ingenious little system here. This is the first time I've actually seen this. And what you do is just undo the screw here. This is the screw to hold the SSD in place. So right now it's for the 2242 size. Move it here, screw that in place. That will then cater for the 2260, which I happen to have one right here. And then right back here is for your 2280 size. So it's gonna cater uh, all the popular sizes. All right, so let's open it up and have a look at this backlit keyboard and the touchpad. So, oh wow, that's more silver than I was expecting those keys, but I can see they've got a nice height to them. There's a little bit of flex there, but uh, bear in mind that I've actually still got the back unscrewed a little, so that's that's not really fair for me to, to do this test right now. But no, that is good. That's got a good feel to it, those keys as well. But the problem with, with these silver keyboards that I encountered, especially on the Xiaomi, the Mi um, laptop Air, the 12 inch model, is that uh, sometimes you can't really see those keys. It depends on the bright lights you've got, the angle of those lights, like right now, it makes it a little more difficult to see those those keys there, but being backlit and at this price range of around 300 US, that is good. Now the touchpad, this is gonna be a Windows Precision, Precision one, so they haven't changed that, and the bezels remain exactly the same. Dual array microphones, there you can see the tiny little dots, and a front-facing two megapixel webcam. So the layout is unchanged from the Techlast F7, well, the ODM. It's still the same keyboard. It's just like they've changed the keys and made them backlit. So it, it really does feel the same and the same amount of flex. And you notice the difference here. I would have preferred them to actually have gone probably just with a black keyboard and then your white backlight. But there we go. You can see now the difference between the two of them. Now we do have three status LEDs. So power, caps lock, and your numbers lock. Now that screen is at least matte coated, so at least it's not a glossy plus TN panel would be a double whammy there. It wouldn't be too great for that. So let's power it up. Go straight into the BIOS if I can. I'm just mashing escape. Uh, whoa, okay, that's a very bluish looking screen and it's flickering away on camera. So we can see here that the viewing angles even in the BIOS that they are absolute rubbish really. I mean, you've got to look at it straight on. As the person, the user in front of it, you're fine, but if you happen to be showing content to someone else that's standing next to you, then that could be an issue for them. You can see, look, it goes down to quite dark there. And this right here, the magical setting. If the thermals are good, and they were on the F7, you can simply go along to the power limit one, and you can disable this. Disabling this will increase GPU performance. I've seen up to something like 40% on the Apollo Lake, and it gives you probably about 10% more CPU performance as well. But I'll keep this enabled for now, of course, for my benchmarks and tests and everything. So here we are in Windows, and I didn't have to set it up first, which is unusual. So someone had already created an account. I've just gone straight into it. Now, I don't know whether it's the retailer doing this or Jumper themselves. If you're a little bit unsure, then I would do a factory reset, but be careful, it could come back all in Chinese, which has happened to me in the past. Otherwise, just do a complete new, clean, fresh install of Windows 10. So it is not the latest version they are using either, so it's not like the uh, Redstone 5 update. There's some good news here as well with the RAM, so we are running at the correct speed, so 2.4 gigahertz, dual channel, but we don't, of course, have a lot of free RAM here. Only having four gigabytes, instead of the six we got on the Apollo Lake laptops. The SSD is a B-Win, that's a Chinese brand, and it's actually got decent speeds here because normally what happens with the smaller 2242 ones, the write speeds will often suffer. And here they have a little now, it could be up to maybe about 500 writes you'll see, for example, on a typical SATA 3 SSD. And the 4Ks, these are decent as well, so we've got good speeds on this SSD. Now under the device manager, nothing really here new to show you because I pointed out before that it has the Intel Wireless AC3165. That is of course with Bluetooth 4.1, that one there. And there is our chipset, so it's a quad-core Intel Celeron N4100 
Here is the Geekbench 4 result. Now this is very good. Single core score improvement over the Apollo Lake M3450 is approximately 25%. That is really good. And then when the multi-core score, that has improved by about 19, 18%. So it is a nice step up here. So back on the topic of the TN panel. So the horizontal viewing angles, they're actually good. I like the fact that this is a matte coated panel so we're not going to have those annoying reflections because look at this this is the f7 this is like a mirror it just reflects lots of things i know i've got nothing displayed at the moment with the black there and yes the tech class s7 does have a matte screen later on models i got unlucky with that one the first batch so the white balance of this screen it's a little off it's definitely on the cool blue side but this can be corrected in the windows settings sorry the intel settings there for the graphics and i can even correct that of course using something like my uh, proper calibrating tool i can use my spider pro and measure this but for a tn panel the colors look good the blacks look good i do like what i see the problem is now that looking at it straight on it looks perfect but if i stand up then it's going to look like that and i'm going to have to just keep adjusting that screen but in a sitting down position like right now the screen is super usable, perfectly fine, and not really an issue. And just demonstrate the backlit keyboard now. So it's of two levels. So we've got a low setting, a high setting, and then just plain off, which you can see right now. So you just need to hit function, space. So that is the low setting. Uh, again, this flickering you're seeing, just like the screen, this is only on camera. And that's the high setting, which is quite right this is really good each key is individually lit and it is really quite clear now and looks great speaker test time so as i pointed out with the internals we have those four little speakers located in here so the sound's gonna come up that way and i expect similar performance to the tech last f7 so it's not going to sound wonderful So not great sounding from that. Now there is software out there that you can use to improve it. And I actually run it on my Teclas F7. It's called DFX Speakers. But you don't have to use that. That's a paid program. There's also free ones out there. But I'll give you a sample now of the difference it can make though, to the volume at least. doesn't really improve the quality but it does at least increase the loudness which they are lacking on the EasyBook X4. Here I have Linux Manjaro up and running and there's a few things that aren't working so wireless is working the trackpad doesn't work at all so nothing whatsoever from this trackpad I cannot control the screen brightness either there's no controls for that so either I need to update my Linux versions for the latest kernels and things like that but it looks like it could be down of course to the new chipset and the new hardware to quickly mention the touchpad so this supports Windows gestures it is a precision touchpad and it's exactly the same as the Jumper EasyBook 3 the version 4 and the 3L Pro and also the Tech Last F7 this is a good touchpad all right, now to quickly recap, but before I do, I have it side by side with the Tech Last F7. Now this one has the uh, glossy panel, which isn't normal. It normally has a matte panel. And you can see that when I angle it up like this, it does dim down, but it doesn't shift out completely the colors. And then of course with the TN panel, when I do that, you get the idea. This is just the biggest con of this laptop. The rest of it is absolutely Brilliant, I feel, for the price. It is, because we've got the same build of the already good Teclas F7, because it's the same ODM. So the keyboard is good. It feels just like this one. It's quite firm. It's got a nice typing experience to it. Now, the fact that it's silver, I'm not particularly too fond of, because as I mentioned, that depends on the angle, what lighting conditions you are. Sometimes you can't see the keys there. But being backlit for the $300 price tag, that is, is really quite good. The other thing is the SSD slot, so they changed that now. They've enabled, or support, you could say, for all SSD sizes, apart from maybe that 20 to 100 that we don't actually really see anything of. So that is really good that they've done that, they've improved on that. Okay, it is faster, definitely, the performance. 
The other thing, we lose two gigabytes of RAM, but we gain the faster RAM. So I feel Jumper, they have on their hands, I hope Jumper that you're watching this video, possibly one of the best budget laptops. All they need to do now, put an IPS panel in here and give us an eight gigabyte RAM option. And please, fingers crossed, keep those power limits open to the end user because if we want to tweak that up, let us do that, please. Because if you do that, graphics performance will increase dramatically as I have shown with the Apollo Lakes. And with this one here, I actually run no power limit on this model and that really does improve the performance. It can almost double the frame rate in older games. So it does make a big, big difference there. Battery life, more gaming tests, benchmarks, and I will use this laptop for a week or two before the full review. And I do hope to catch you back then and see you in the channel for that. So, so far, I know a lot of people in the comments are gonna ask me, is the screen a deal breaker? It is and it isn't. If you look at it straight on and that's your intended use, then it's not. I can put up with this. And in fact, this is going to be, I feel, my next laptop I'm gonna use. I'm gonna retire the Ticklast F7. That really is, is how much the viewing angles bother me. Obviously not that much because I'm not using a screen at an old angle or anything like that. But if it does bother you, then stay away from this particular model if you don't like TN panels. That is pretty, pretty obvious there. Thank you so much for watching. Bye for now.